They'll be calling you a radical. I'm going to put this study that has emerged from this test that was sent out to eighth graders in 1912. It falls right into my post ignorance thesis how this whole gig started as people for somehow, it's generational arrogance to the Balco 100th power. As this gig of my started out post ignorance, I want to explain some things. I want to talk to, look, I get thousands of comments a day sometimes, or excuse me, hundreds, sometimes thousands, emails. I'm not speaking to some person directly sometimes i'm speaking to three or four thousand people my retention level is 75 percent so i have access to analyticals through youtube i mean i'm in the second tier so i could tell when somebody combated it i mean they break it down so sophisticated most people that comment on videos don't even watch the video we know this you know some people my retention level saw so the average youtube video is watched something like 13 seconds it's likely so we have a group of generate i'm not here to have some ridiculous old Tired, worn out. So if I make a mistake in a comment or read back to you, you big crybabies, oh, the all over guys go, oh, the Kevin Blanche is just good. He go, I disagreed with him, and so he blocked me. <laughs> fuck you. Really, fuck you. Move on. I, I'm not here for that. I'm here to tell this tale. This is an art movement. This is an education. As I say, my walk that I'm going to do, why? Because you can't protest because you don't know how to protest. How can you protest? when you're so ignorant. And people say, oh, we've bred a generation of so-called ignorant through the Rush Limbaugh's of the world, through the Glenn Beck memory. Sell your freaking gold, sell your silver, buy silver at 35, buy gold, sell your Dow at 60. You know, it's worked out so nice. We put these people, so we bred a whole society of these walking, talking, big mouth, arrogant players, some of the most ignorant people in the world. And this is not commentary. This is documented through my PhD as I went into this. As I went into this trying to prove why, are we really that, oh, beyond, is this study, 99.9999% would all fail this, and this is deductive thinking. I go into learned theory, what's your opinion of Congress? I hate the man, who's your congressman? Don't know. Name two supreme, I mean, I go over and over and over and over. People sit behind, because we've bred a big mouth, arrogant generation of know nothings who think they are. They're the most dangerous people in the world, the George Bush, the Dick Cheney, to be able to support these wars, who couldn't get out of map and break this. This is not commentary, this is documented proof. I'm not here to have a fucking bullshit debate. The debating is over on nuclear theory. The debating is long over. Look, leukemia comes from one place. Nuclear fall. Okay, yeah, you're 85, you get leukemia. That's one thing, is the death process. Young people, children, leukemia is nuclear fall. Hello or exposure to chemicals like benzene, or their combination thereof. The Nevada test site proved it to us. The Chernobyl proved it to us. The freaking, the study after study of studies right in your faces. You want to fall for this bullshit. And look, as I say, my march is going to be, we can't protest because people are too ignorant to protest. Because you, okay, they get in the street, they get all radical, whatever, and they're all, their energy, we don't like this, we don't like this, we don't like this 1% taking advantage. But then you have a conversation about the cure. As it, in the, Nuclear fight, it says, say it, fight it, cure it. We know statistically. Is that when I got cancer after this, my chances of surviving, me being alive is such an incredible miracle on so many levels. Because I say it, I fight it. I dug in in the inception. I shouldn't, the diagnosis, I, when I diagnosed, I should have died right there. And then, that's when it should have went down. Look, say it, we know people that say it in a loud, profound way, survive it in a much higher percentage. We know it, factually. The data is all out there. It exists. So when people come to me, I'm not here to have some ridiculous old, the debating on nuclear fire and nuclear energy is long over, long over. Yeah, it's been a masquerade party and it's a posture and groom liar. I equate it to the flu epidemic of 1918 across North America. As a lot of people when I used to make students go walk through our cemetery, the governments denied it, the people kept denying it, they kept denying it, they kept denying it, even when it was massive epidemic, people were dying in droves. They kept telling you everything's okay, it's okay. It's the old playbook, it's the Chernobyl playbook. It's the way they play. It's the way, it's because you, people are not intelligent enough to even freaking stick up for themselves. They'll go right to their deathbed because they are that pathetic. This is a pathetic generation. It is a horrible, and again, not commentary, documentary. The baby boomer, echo boomers are pathetic. And I've proved it. I can prove it in my post ignorance over and over. This is my art movement. Most of these videos, I hope, they're more for future generations to look back and say, hey, because like my march. I said, we're going to go march. Because the nuclear fallout is part of the landscape now. It's unavoidable because nobody would do anything. You bought and sold 
and drank the Kool-Aid as the Rush Limbaugh's, the Glenn Bay. Oh, you know, sell your Dow 6500 a half white man. By the way, there's nothing black about Barack. I was raised by a Republican banker and freaking thing. He, he, in his own book, he says he never even seen a black person until he moved to LA, except on TV. You know, it kills me how you fall for all this stuff. And this Rush Limbaugh, this Glenn Beck, this Sean Hannity, they throw it out so they breed a whole crew of arrogant know nothing, big mouth know nothings. And they say, oh, you Kevin, you're, yeah, go toe to toe to with me. Try me. Try me on any of these subject matter. Try me in finance. As two years ago, I put up this subset. You know, I should be chirping that from the highest tower. Look at these finance videos I did two years ago. People say, oh, good, I do. No, you didn't. You didn't do shit. You didn't do shit because you're freaking, it's false bravado. It's ridiculous and sickening. The debate on nuclear fall is over. It's being widely reported. And they're posturing and grooming. They're trying to groom it. The same whores that did it, or they can't avoid it now. The marine biologists, whores. As in 1918, a lot of people don't realize this, after the fact, after so many people died, popular opinion and the American intellectual mobs, they turned on those people. The Sanche Guptas of the world who not didn't report this, they intentionally covered this up, and I can read it over. I, I, we know who all of you are. Everybody's gonna turn on you. You're the face of death, you're the face of evil. This thing, my march, is going to be with the landscape, the architecture, everything, because it's part of our lives now. So how do we survive? Say it. Say it. I'm telling you, you people that are in this fight, you people, the vloggers, and you people that are in this pure good fight, you're in this fight for a reason, because that's how you counter cancer. Seriously. The people that are fighting this are going to live. They're going to live. The people that are in denial and you think, oh, this can't happen to me, there's a lot of people rooting for me to die. You wouldn't believe the videos I've got because, oh, that chemo evil, you know, go to doctor down there and freak the Texas. Oh, oh, autism cars by this because you just fall because you become a PhD, you become an intellectual without hard work. Because I watched a couple videos and I listened to Glenn Beck talk about this, or I read Jenny McCarthy's book, or I read, and so you're a natural because you don't want to do any of the fucking hard. We're not an expert. Oh God, Kevin's gonna die because he took chemo. I had no other fucking choice. I use our term because you hyperbole feed your dogmatic fucking idealism that you want. No, fuck no. This is the most pathetic generation in the history of humanity. And I, it's not commentary. You look at this test. Not a, nobody can pass this. Like this is eighth grade. People passed it. I use the old Harvard study. Ignorance is a major, major epidemic. So this, what we're doing, all of a sudden, we have to educate before we can, it's like, oh, we hate the 1% sucked up, but you have a conversation about tariffs, you have a conversation about protectionism, you have a conversation about antitrust laws, you have a conversation of usury laws, and it's just like, so you start talking about shutting down all nuclear, getting ready to spent fuel plays, everything, and everything. Oh, oh, we have a cure for cancer. Oh, we have nanotechnology that can clean this up. Oh, we have, we have nuclear energy that doesn't compare ways. Oh, we can use therapy. It's all hyperbolically bullshit because you're freaking lazy. You're lazy, you don't want to do any hard work, you don't want to spend any time learning this thing. So how can we protest and how can we, you can't protest because you get up in the street and these people just laugh. America's their own worst enemy. The poppy's their own worst enemy. Dude, 90% of these people fucking deserve, hell no. But your ignorance spills over on me. Yeah, I'm gonna protest and I'm gonna educate because I want to live. Say it, fight it, cure it. And all us people that are fighting over there, the popular opinion, they will always turn their back. They will always turn their back this is epidemic. Ignorance is an epidemic. We are educating, we're trying to, and there's plenty of great people on this YouTube site. And do not underestimate me and my small army. I have a small army, several hundred out there that are powerhouses out there. We are a force to be reckoned with. And you want to come and leave some bullshit, ridiculous comment, oh, nanotechnology can clean them. Oh, nuclear waste can be made without freaking, uh, nuclear power without waste. You know, go on and on and on. Oh, we have a care for can't, you know, Fuck, get back in your mother's fucking fucking thing and go, you know, listen to Glenn Beck and fuck, go fucking buy gold and sell your Dow 60. I mean, do all these things. Get fucking cancer of the fucking mouth and fucking tell the doctors how to fucking treat you. But we see it in our hospital. They come in and they're tearing the doctors. And these doctors are trying to fight. I mean, well, I'm in the number one fucking leukemia unit in the world. You gotta see these doctors. Like, they understand what I understand. The populace is their own worst enemy. But you're affecting me and my family and my loved ones. Our small army. We're trying to grow this so we have a voice, so that we can protect not just all of you ignorant, dogmatic lunatics out there who don't believe to be served. We're trying to save ourselves. Say it, fight it, cure it. And you people that are fighting this, the fuku lie, 
And this tale is going to be told, yeah, we may not get our benefit right now. And people say, ah, oh, but I'm with the tax I've taken. Ain't you dead yet? I was hoping you'd die. Oh, you're a dumb fuck. You took chemo. You're going to die. You're going to live, 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 live. You're all going to get your fucking turn. And as people that are fighting this, there is a benefit to fighting this. Enlightenment. Our small army, you're going to live. You're going to live. You're going to overcome this. Because it's part of the landscape now. It's out there. Say it. Say it as part of the fucking survival of nuclear fallout. Fighting the good fight, the Megan Rice nuclearism, that is what this is all about. Stay in tune.